Hey, I wanted to make a quick video on um, some of the ideas that I came across when I was working on the oil field. And I, I did that for many years. Um, anyway, ideas for food preparation and um, getting organized for a hitch. A lot of that depends on a few things. Uh, one is the, um, the method of transportation that you're using to get to your um, the location that you stay at. Um, I've taken all modes of transportation available, even trains and um, <clears throat> and so all that gives you different abilities to travel with food. Obviously with um, flying and trains, you can only take so much fresh food or so much prepared food that you've made at home and that you're taking. Um, <clears throat> so that's one thing. Driving gives you much more flexibility in what you can take with you, obviously. Um, <clears throat> but for any of those situations, it comes down to how you can store food, what your options are when you get to where you're going. Um, and a lot of that depends on the current economic situation for oil. Is it a boom time? Is it very slow? There's so many factors involved. Like when it's boom time, well, a lot of um, service companies out there will offer man camps to employees. And um, some of those man camps serve food, which is awesome. It's so helpful and will save a lot of money. So for instance, Let's say that, um, let's say you had an early morning shift. Well, you leave early to get to location, which might be two hours away. <clears throat> and that's how that goes, right? Um, but it may be before breakfast is served at the man camp. Well, you would wait until you got back after your shift, and, um, and then they would be serving dinner, hopefully. Um, so you'd have dinner and then you would get extra food that you could save for breakfast and lunch the following day. Uh, and of course, what you got would hinge on what kind of storage you had in your room to keep the, the food fresh until you left for the next day. Um, so there's options there, but you just, it all kind of depends on what you have out there. And um, if you have, you can sneak a fridge into these man camps, and a lot of times they will let you do it, um, even though they say they don't allow it. Fridges on, um, they don't draw a ton of amperage, and so you won't see them, in my experience anyway, you won't see them flip a lot of breakers. Um, microwaves and heaters, like floor, you know, little personal heaters, those will flip breakers all the time but so that's an option if you can get a fridge in there and you don't have to change rooms when you come back from your uh, your days off awesome a lot of times they will make you change rooms uh, so that when you leave from a hitch you got to check out and then when you come back you check in and it's a brand new room kind of makes having a fridge out there super hard in fact almost impossible but even with that um, you there are there is food that you can get in the um, the mess hall or the cafeteria or whatever you want to call it that you don't have to store in a fridge. You just have to check it out when you get there. Um, now there are other economic situations where it's not like that. Um, when it gets slow, not only do options like that go away because companies just can't afford it. Man camps are hugely expensive, but um, a lot of times they'll ask you to get an apartment or stay in a hotel or, or whatever it is. Well, that's out of your pocket. And um, it gives you more food options, obviously, because you can have a fridge at an, um, at an apartment. Or you can have one, obviously, at a hotel. Nothing huge, but you can get some food in there. And if you can go to the store every four days or something, well, you can have fresh food all the time. It's great. The problem is, if you don't make money while you're out there, and then you're spending money on top of that, 
like paying double payments for you know things that you're paying for at home a mortgage or a, you know rent for an apartment if you're paying that amount in two places well it doesn't make sense to work out there and a lot of guys ran into that so it at that point it's geared more to, towards locals um, and that's just how it is so obviously you want to be working out there when it's either boom time or just plain busy nothing crazy because you'll make more than what you'd spend that's great it all comes down to the amount of overtime hours you get and when it's slow you don't get overtime that's just how it is um, so back to food um, some of all of this depends on the type of work that you do so if you're a technical person um, a mechanic uh, an e-tech an engineer things like that well you have sometimes more options available to you in both food storage and um, the, the things that you have in your vehicle that can store food or heat food or even keep food cool to have a vehicle is a big deal um, other jobs where you're a hand on either a, a platform you know a rig out there or your hand um, a frack hand or a coil tubing hand anything like that makes it a little harder but most of the time there's uh, microwaves in um, in some of the equipment like data vans or or the cabs of coil tubing units or anything like that you can find a microwave a lot of times you can find a fridge a lot of times like in North Dakota when it's winter time you can certainly keep frozen food around that's not a problem but you have to watch what you have out there frozen food because I have lost some produce in those temperatures that I forgot about and uh, it turns into a rock there's nothing it's terrible and of course it ruins the food at that point yeah so you have to be thinking and not forget about some of the stuff that you have sitting around in weather or hot temperatures down in West Texas right if you don't have your food protected it's not going to turn out well although I've eaten some pretty sketchy food out there just because I was hungry and that's all the food I had crossed my fingers ate it <laughs> and kind of watched the situation for a couple hours if it, if I came out on the other end everything was fine well I won for the day um but yeah it, a lot of that can come down to the position that you have out there um I'm just sorry I'm looking at some notes I put down here because a lot of times I forget stuff um <clears throat> yeah so I think I've covered pretty much everything but it's all about thinking it out ahead of time, knowing your situation out there. Um, and that takes a few hitches sometimes to get a, a real good idea of what your options are. But anything that you can do to avoid having to buy food at uh, C stores is good. You know, first of all, it's more expensive. And secondly, it's not very healthy. There's only so many sausages or hot dogs you can eat at those places or a um, hot pocket you can microwave that that would sustain you and not be good for you. Well, none of it's good for you, but if you eat it all the time, definitely not good for you. So um, try to, to get non-perishable stuff if you have to fly or uh, take the train. That you can put in your your baggage um, if you're if you're flying uh, well excuse me if you're driving well you have a lot more options but you got to look out what your situation is um, when you get there do you have the ability to store food anyway I've kind of covered all this but it's all in the planning and uh, and then it's all about execution when you get out there you got to think about your stuff way in advance now there's ways to eat healthy you just have to plan on it and uh, protein bars and nuts and fruit they're your friends man they you can get a lot of mileage out of that stuff and you can buy it for a whole lot less in the stores even out in uh in the towns that are next to the the path right 
like Williston, North Dakota, or uh, Midland, Odessa. You, you, there's stores there that you can save some money at. So that's it. Please feel free to ask me questions, um, comments, anything like that. Um, I'm going to try to provide more information about this as I think of it. Uh, so I'd really appreciate if you could like and subscribe. It really would help me out a lot. And um, I hope that this information is helpful to you. So anyway, take care. If you're working out in the patch, be safe. Always think about what you're going to do before you do it. It will keep you alive. And maybe keep your coworkers alive too. All right. Take care.